Thank you for watching today. This is Kinnear. Welcome to another Starfield video. In the last May beta update video, we started testing a survival mode loadout. Most of that testing was against human enemies in basic combat. In this video, we're going to go to the deepest, coldest corner of the settled systems to find out the real impact of environmental afflictions. We'll also find out how to avoid dehydration and malnourishment indefinitely. So let's go. So we're going to go out to the Barnard Star System and look at the planet Frost. There are a couple of spacer scarabs. I wasn't expecting space combat. Let's do it. This will be a great test. The first space combat was literally part of the introductory combat mission. So we'll see whether this is any harder than any other combat. Three on one. Spacer scarabs. One down. Shields are holding up fine. See if we can lock in and kill this guy in targeting mode so I can advance my skills. Give some shield hits. Now we're running them down fast. This is a this is the frontier. Unmodified. Nothing special. Ooh, we're taking some damage. That guy's got a good beat on us from the side. This guy finished. Come on, Vasco. Fix those shields. Should have gotten an R2 unit. Is he laughing at us? He won't be laughing soon. I am just a little spam happy on those guys. There you go. I did get credit for targeting control systems. I was hoping that, and I got a level. Very nice. The levels are coming fast. I only have a 25% XP boost based on the gameplay options I've selected, but it really seems fast. So this is the planet Frost in Barnard's Star, just for reference. I don't really care about the spaceship debris, but I just want some place to land. Looks cold and terrible to me. Now, before we go, let's check a couple things. Close to one to one time dilation. My hydration's at 25 minutes, that's fine. I wanna do some tests later with healing and no. different time dilation on different planets. Well, at least we can scour the place for materials. There's quite a bit here, actually. You see listening post. I hear a ship. I see it. Very cloudy. There it is, in the distance. Okay. You're a pipeline control tower. And I already have some damage. I think that's left over. So you can see there's a part of my, my health bar is already below where it should start. I believe my health is in the mid 400s at this point in time. That damage is left over from earlier combat, which I didn't heal. Three seventy six out of four sixty two. Cold. The suit's taking a hit. Okay, so that's what we. That's where we are. Hypothermia kicks in. It's pretty fast. The confusion effect is not a big deal. I'm not in space and not targeting. I could probably live with that for a little while. It's going to get worse, though. Watching the yellow bar, I'm definitely losing a little bit slowly of my maximum health. You can pull up the improved surface maps and look at the ship at a distance and maybe get an idea of what kind of ship it is, but I'm going to go over there anyway. Not just because I'm interested in the ship. I'll take it if I can take the ship, but I am very interested to see if it is sufficiently... I'm very interested to see if it will be a safe place to get away from the hypothermia, if it's warm, essentially. It should be. 
chips and outpost. I've had some issues already going into buildings. If they're not completely sealed, you get no benefit whatsoever. Yeah, I'm down to half health. That's happening pretty quickly. I have not been out here that long. Pipeline control tower. Hypothermia gain. So I healed it, and then it became worse. That took no time at all. That was fast. So I had hypothermia. I took meds to resolve it. It came back 30, 40 seconds later, and then got worse immediately. And my health is clearly, clearly cratering. And it became worse again very quickly. We are definitely going inside. Locked or not. Sarah does her running quickly to the far wall routine. They haven't corrected that yet. Hypothermia. Poor. Progno My prognosis is poor and it is severe. Food and water are good. Let's go ahead and take care of that. While my health is low, I should no longer be losing health. Is there anybody even on this? It's kind of a dumpy little ship. Can I take it? I can take it. Oh, that's creepy. What are you doing, sir? That is a strange bug. Okay, so, yeah, small cargo capacity, I say slightly better jump range than the Frontier, but I don't think I'll swap it out permanently, let's, we'll put it into the garage. Make it my home ship. So the next thing I want to test, and because I have decreased health, I want to go to planet with different time dilation. And I'm over in the Mejeo system. And I want to go to Sunny DeFalco's island. Good to know, it's there. I don't think any of these planets have the time dilation I want. I think I actually need to be in Cheyenne. Because I'm looking for Kodos. Kodos has a six hour day. Who's that ship? Oh, it's Grandma. I am not going to get distracted and go have lunch with Grandma. Just going to land. Let's take a sunny side of Kodos. Kodos has its own environmental issues as well. I, this might have been a good place to go. I was on another planet earlier and there were multiple environmental issues and I didn't like trying to test with two or three at the same time so that's why I picked frost earlier that's all my cargo anyway quick, quick look around the ship yeah, there's there's not much to this ship but I'm a level 10 this is my first captured ship I'm not going to complain free ship is free ship that's it Nothing but a couple of one by ones. That's it. Four one by ones, and there's a bed in the main area. I saw it. So one hour is 15 minutes. Let's 
double check. We're at 143 health. Get up and get going. We've got the stars to explain. We went from 19 to 11 minutes and 27 seconds. So it looks like even though we spent 15 minutes, we only lose hydration and nourishment at half the rate of the time we spend while sleeping. So we slept for 15 minutes, but we only lost seven and a half minutes of both of those. Okay, let's do the same thing on Venus. I'm at 10 minutes and 19 seconds. I know what the result's gonna be here. One hour is gonna be 100 hours UT. We are malnourished and dehydrated just from sleeping. So if you find planets that have the time dilation that gives you less than one hour or one hour of sleep time, I can't imagine there's a lot of benefit in searching those out. That might be a happy accident from time to time, but not much more than that. So we've tested on Kodos, we've tested on Venus, and it's as expected. Go ahead and register the transpo and park it on Mars. The final test I want to do on Frost is to go ahead and let the hypothermia run its full course and see where it bottoms out. I'm sure you can find something you like. So we know at this point in time, if you're on the planet's surface for a little bit of time and the conditions are wrong, you will get hypothermia. Prognosis can worsen, and pretty quickly, actually. Surprisingly quickly. So I picked a sunny side of frost this time. Oh, nice. The, uh, what is that, a, a mining platform? That's the one full of, well, I won't mention it, but that's a fun one. We're, we're not going to get distracted and go do that either. Looks like it might be an, an anomaly in the background. So what do we have? Go ahead and make sure we're fed and hydrated. Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Slightly tipsy, and it's cold. The suit is kicking in. Full health, four ninety-four. So I did decide to run over to this Mybridge pharmaceutical lab over here. On the way, I heard a ship coming in. I like shiny things and free ships. We have to go find out what this ship is. And in the process, we should discover the site for the mining rig. I think that's what it's called. No. A lot of fun up there. A lot of fun up there. Abandoned mining platform. Right. So now we know we have one of those on Frost. So that's a great looking ship. It's huge. And the ship landing site did not appear on my scanner until I got pretty close. I didn't see it when I was over at my ship. I don't think it's the same problem we had in the previous patch, but. Those are civilians. They're not hostile. Great. Yeah, that would be a great ship. Look at all the cargo space on it. You guys don't need this ship, do you? And hypothermia kicked in. That's actually a pretty long run. My my run towards the pharmaceutical lab and then the run back over here, that was probably four or five minutes before hypothermia kicked in. Maybe because it's daylight and there's no storm. That's that's gonna be my assumption going forward. That the weather does matter. Go ahead and get rid of that since we're inside. I 
I did before taking this trip out go back to the lodge and make 10 or 20 of all the key hymns. So I explored the ship. There's not much on the ship. There were no enemies. It's just a civilian ship. Pilot seat. And I can't fly this ship. So I'm going to have to make a trip to the UC Vanguard Training Center. I don't mind doing that. That's great. And I can level up and get to class B's and C's pretty easily. I've done that on, on very low level characters. It takes a little time. You just go into the simulator and you just keep fighting. That was an interesting diversion. We did get hypothermia. We're okay now. Nice ship I can't have. Let's get to the other side of the planet and get back in the dark and maybe find... We don't have a storm. But maybe the conditions here will be a little worse. Bunker, deserted mineral plant. I'm not going to go explore any of those. I'm really just going to hang around outside the frontier. I'm fed and hydrated. My thermal resistance is 65. That's not terrible. Not the best, but... And I will note on the hydration and the nourishment... What I've discovered is if you draw a weapon, it has no effect on hydration and nourishment when you first draw the weapon. But if you use your uh, quick select and switch weapons, every time I switch weapons, it resets the nourishment and the hydration back to 30 minutes. I assume that's a bug. We'll see if it makes it into the final patch or not. Don't know that that is a setting related to gameplay. It doesn't make sense to me. But maybe there's maybe there's a reason for it. Yeah, I'm starting to take damage already. Down 455. I don't have hypothermia yet, but I am taking damage just because of the cold. So let time click by here. I will speed through some of this. I did get hypothermia. That did happen. That took a that took more than a few minutes. That's not like when I first hit this planet and went after the first ship. That took that took a lot less time. But I am pulling out a weapon every now and then and switching the weapon just to keep my nourishment and hydration refreshed. So that got worse within about 30 or 40 seconds. I have sped this up, but I'm, I've made some notes on how long it's taking and it got worse again. That second shock effect seems to come very quickly after the first one. So as you can tell, I'm I'm losing health pretty quickly at this point. And we're just going to stand outside. My prognosis improved, so my hypothermia got better, oddly enough. Let's take a look at that. I'm stable, but I still have all three aspects of hypothermia. I'm down to 294 health. speed things up. But we'll just wait here with Sarah. She gets a little bored and wanders off. Health continues to drop. 200. So the shock value says that our health should drop, at least the way I interpret it, that our health should drop to 10% of our total health. I assume that is 10% of the 400 and some. But my health, I, I hope my health stops dropping in the 40s. Which isn't really a problem if you're just running around. But if you're in combat, it's a real problem. Right? If, you're, if your health is very low and you're trying to engage enemies, and you're at 10% health, you're, you're probably going to get killed pretty quick. I'm just running around. Oh, my health bar has turned red at this point in time. 
I'm at 146 out of 494. Not good. I don't think running around made a difference. Just you no know, physical exertion made a difference. Stable, but uh, dropping fast. Sarah's just looking at me like I'm an idiot. 80. I'm well rested, but my health is at 80. This is getting uncomfortably low. I'm getting a heartbeat and a red effect on my vision. Help, Sarah. I'm dying. 52. Sarah just walks away. Like, why don't you go inside? Heartbeat speeds up. Health is dropping fast now. Sarah? What's happening, Sarah? Kind of spooky. I don't have much health left. I got 19. That's way below 10%. It's just dropping. That's far below 10%. I better get a quick save in. This isn't going to end well. Eight. <laughs> I'm doomed. <laughs> I am doomed. And I'm dead. I have died of hypothermia. And we restore. We're going to run in very quickly. And we're going to treat our hypothermia very quickly. And the hypothermia is cured. We have almost no health. <laughs> five. Yeah, five. I don't know what 10% means in, uh, in terms of hypothermia but it's not 10% in any math I've seen, so. And because I changed, you, you notice there, I just changed weapons a couple times and I'm fully fed again. But my health just ticked up there. I just waited. Not five anymore. It's up higher now. Just being inside, I didn't sleep. And my health ticked up a bit. Possible just standing inside would restore my health over time. 115. I'm impatient. Light heartbeat. I'm dehydrated and malnourished, but my health is considerably higher and I don't have a yellow bar anymore. So it's just time. That was just an hour. One ninety-one out of two sixty-six because I'm malnourished, dehydrated. Ah, oh, Sarah needs a nap too. <laughs> now I don't think that sitting will do anything other than pass time. I don't think it ever has done anything other than passing time, but we'll try it real quickly. Sit for an hour. We'll let Sarah have a brief nap. She did walk around with me outside, watch me almost die, watch me die. I guess since I restored the quick save, she watched me almost die. But we need the bed now, Sarah. Pop up. Thank you. One more sleep, and we are fully healed. If we eat and drink, we should be back up in the 400s. So that's it. The environmental effects are real, and they are weather-related. 
don't think it relates to the side of the planet you're on or whether it's daytime or dark, but they absolutely seem to be faster when you're in a storm. And I don't know if there's anything on the HUD that tells us ambient temperatures or anything like that, but if, if it looks like you're in a storm, you're in a storm, right? It's all visual cues. I will be careful in the future. I might even choose specific things to wear in order to increase my ability to survive. Thank you for watching to the end. I really appreciate it. If you would be so kind, please hit the like button, subscribe, and the notification bell. This is Kinnear, and I'm out of here.